So you want to brew? Here's what you need to get started. You can start out really simple as we suggest, but really the sky's the limit. There is no shortage of people and companies out there that are willing to take homebrewers money and sell us something. Anything. At its basis, you need something to ferment in. And that can be a glass fermenter like this with a narrow mouth. For that, you will use a bung as a stopper, right? Or you can use, looks like a big pickle jar, but it is actually a one gallon glass fermenter with a lid and a grommet to hold an airlock. You can also use buckets. You can use a lot of containers, to be honest with you. I don't really go for plastic. A lot of people love it. It's not a problem if you really want to use it. I don't have an issue with it that way. I just like using glass. I like being able to see in and know what's happening in there. Plus, I tend to make smaller batches. You can also use three gallon and five gallon containers to do it. No problem. It depends on what batch size you want to make. If you're looking to be frugal, you can find those one gallon fermenters that Brian showed you earlier filled with juice, free juice. You just pay for the fermenter, right? Yeah. We mentioned lids and I mentioned a grommet for an airlock. You need an airlock. What's an airlock do? Keeps the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. Basically, it's a one-way valve, just like the trap under your sink. The gases escape, they push things out. There's liquid in here. You wouldn't actually have it empty. And bugs cannot get in, but the gases can escape. Therefore, it doesn't explode. It's very, very important to not seal up a fermentation vessel when it's fermenting because it will explode. The whole point in fermentation is it creates a lot of CO2 and alcohol. Those two things expand, creating pressure, and eventually you get boom. Relics are great for sanitization as well as safety. Speaking of sanitization, ta-da! You're gonna want a sanitizer that you can find in your local area. Our area, Star Sand, is the number one choice for us. What we do is we follow the instructions, instructions, sorry. That's what I call them, instructions. <laughs> that are labeled on the back and use our red bucket of sanitization. Otherwise known as Turbos, which is just a giant red bucket behind Brian. You may or may not be able to see it. There it is. You can see a little bit of it. <laughs> And we use that to create our sanitization liquid to sanitize every single thing we're going to use in the brewing process. Exactly, including even our hands. We dunk our hands in there, make sure that everything is clean. Sanitization is really important. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, what did they do a thousand years ago? Well, you know what they did? They drank a lot of really bad brews because they were probably infected. They probably had problems, but they didn't want to waste it because making wine and mead and cider was as much a food preservation method as it was a way to get drunk. So if they just spent a couple of months making it, even if it got infected, they're drinking it anyway. I'd rather not drink infected brews. I also you know. like keeping the food that I digest in my stomach and not- Yeah, have. yeah. I'd rather not have it all <laughs> repeat on me in a bad way, so to speak. If you cannot get star sand, um, you can boil things like you do for canning. I highly suggest not using bleach. Some people try it. The problem with bleach is you have to use very, very minute amounts and you have to really rinse it good, which the rinsing process could introduce microbes, which could cause an infection. So you just defeated the entire purpose because if you leave the bleach on there, bleach kills yeast. That simple, so it's not gonna work. Also, if you find difficulty in finding a sanitizer geared towards fermentation because it might not be looked so highly in your area, sanitization for baby bottles works just yep. as well. Yep, baby bottle sanitizer works really, really well and you can usually find that pretty much anywhere. So that's the basics that's gonna get you started, but you can also use repurposed wine bottles or commercially purchased wine bottles to store your fer finished fermentation. We tend to use wine bottles and liquor bottles, like whiskey bottles, things like that. Um, if it's going to be a carbonated beverage, you wanna make sure that the bottle held carbonation before if you're repurposing or that it was made for it in the first place. Most of your swing top bottles can hold carbonation. Those are the basics, but there are some things that are extremely helpful and they will make your life so much easier and your brews probably better in the long run. First up on the list, the auto siphon. While you may be tempted to pour your brew from one bottle to another, it's really not the best way. You can oxygenate, you can activate acetobacters, you can get an infection, all sorts of nasty things can happen. An auto siphon or at least just some 
tubing to create a siphon is a really great way to go. It's just a couple of pieces. They go together and you put it in the liquid and a couple of pumps this way and it starts the flow going. You can rack from one pitcher to another. You can put it into bottles. Works beautifully well and they're really, really inexpensive. We usually get a year or two out of them before the seals are just totally shot. Speaking of pitchers, you probably have a one gallon pitcher in your home already, but does it have this? <laughs> if it doesn't, you want this in your life, trust me. Having those numbers on the side and raised letters really, really works well. Ours happens to be US and metric, so it's easy for conversions, but this way we can find out exactly how many bottles we need, or do we need to put this into a one gallon container or a three gallon, three quarters of a gallon, or is there too much, is there too little? You can learn all that really, really quickly when you're racking. It's just a really wonderful thing. And again, not very expensive. Next on the list of things that I find extremely helpful are hydrometer and a graduated cylinder. Now together, these are your test equipment. They give off that, you know, mad scientist vibe, which is always really cool. But on top of that, it lets you know what's going on in your brew. It's not just about knowing how much alcohol you're making. That's a good thing to know, but it's not super critical to me. What's more important is, is it done? Is it finished? Is it safe? Has it fermented? Is it stuck? All these questions can be answered by this lovely little tube inside this little tube. Next on your list is another item you probably already have, and that is a funnel. We like the larger surface area funnel with, um, and this one is, happens to be stainless steel. We like stainless steel because it's a non-corrosive metal, so therefore we don't have to worry about any issues with alcoholic beverages going in it. It is crucial that when you're using this, you sanitize this along with everything else. If you opt for a plastic model, make sure it's food safe. That's very, very important. Like don't go out to your garage and grab the one that you just changed your oil with last month. Probably not a good idea. And other than something to actually ferment and some yeast maybe, that's all you really need to get started. As always, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.